In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your very own sprint board. So it all begins with a bit of like a brain dump, if you want to call it that. And that brain dump is going to get all of the ideas and projects that you have in mind into a big board. You could do this on a wall. You could do it on a piece of paper that you can roll up and we're going to create what's called a backlog out of this. If you're a fan of getting things done, this is kind of like what David Allen talks about as the first step, is just getting all of your ideas and projects onto uh, out of your head and written down. The next step, once you've got all these post-it notes on the wall or on a big poster or piece of paper, is to actually do an analysis of sorts where you need to prioritize. Now you might think of this, whoops, prioritize. You might think of this in terms of like 80-20 thinking. You might think of this in terms of shippable product. If you've read the book Scrum by Jeff Sutherland, you might think of this in terms of MVP if you've read Lean Startup by Eric Ries. So what you're doing is you're taking a look at all the ideas and all the post-it notes that you have here in deciding what 20% or less of ideas and projects that are here should I put into action. Knowing that for the next two weeks I'm going to focus on these items and ideally only these items. You might think in terms of like what 20% of these sticky notes could I get done that would be so impactful it would almost make the other 80% irrelevant. Or if I could only do one out of five post-it notes, which of these five would it be? You might discover that it's like that one there, that one there, and um, that one there. So once you've done this heavy-duty thinking, and, and it can be heavy-duty thinking, we're, we're kind of asking ourselves um, you know, to make some tough front-loaded decisions. And I'll tell you what, to, to make the tough front-loaded decisions may be challenging, but uh, if you think that's hard, what's even harder is taking too many post-it notes over here and then failing for a bunch of people, letting down your teammates, being slow to get things to market, and now you're losing money and angering people. We don't want to do that. It would be better to figure out in the beginning, okay, we're not doing this one or that one, and then calling that customer or that teammate and saying, you know what, I hate to say this, but... Unfortunately, we're not going to get to this in the next two weeks, um, but we'll take it under advisement in another couple weeks. And that allows them to go arrange themselves accordingly. Um, a big part of this priori prioritization analysis is not only just picking the post-it notes, but also identifying what version of these post-it notes can you accomplish within a two-week uh, period. And that's very much what the shippable product or the MVP part is about. Maybe this is build new website, but you're probably not going to get an entire new website built in two weeks. So you might end up unpacking that into saying, okay, we want to have the mock-up of the website completed. Maybe it's not coded, but the mock-up can certainly be done in the next two weeks. And we know that we've got a good increment or a good version of a project if we know that we could put it in front of a customer within two weeks and get real world feedback. Now you may say to that customer, okay, this is not our final product. This is not even a working version of the website. However, I'm just wanting your feedback on how it looks and feels. So maybe you're not getting the whole thing done, but you're getting a, v a version complete enough that you can get feedback. I would rather you complete to 100% a mock-up of the website than for you to get partially complete on the logo, partially complete on the email marketing, partially complete on the PDF that you're going to give away off the website, partially complete on some of the Infusionsoft programming to automatically tag people who come in through your website, etc., etc., etc. When when we are working, whether it's in our own business or in somebody else's business, the reality is we don't get paid for projects started. If you have 10 projects started but none of them are at any kind of like shippable product or MVP level, then we can't deploy them. and We can't get feedback from teammates or from clients or from investors or consultants or, or whatnot. 
it really handcuffs us. It's kind of like if there was $100,000 in a safe and that safe had a combination lock and it's five numbers for the right combination, but you only have four of the numbers, you get zero dollars. That's why it's so important, instead of being focused on starting a bunch of stuff, is to say, how are we actually going to finish projects? Now, in your Colby test, if in your Colby score, if you are somebody, so we've got fact finder is the first number, follow through, quick start, and implement, or the four numbers of the Colby score. If you have like a one to three here in the follow through score, you're not instinctively going to be somebody who do close loops, finish projects, and instinctively you may also have a tough time unpacking projects into smaller pieces. So if that's the case, try to find somebody on your team or a fellow entrepreneur who is like a six through 10 or so in follow through and they'll be far better at unpacking these projects. And secondly, they'll also instinctively want to take them across the finish line. So you may need to have a bit of a team approach to be successful when it comes to sprint boards and when it comes to um, the overall ideas of Scrum. Okay, so we've done our backlog brain dump. We've done an analysis. We've identified these three projects or tasks as being 80-20 important and we've also figured out a version of them that we could actually ship, make live, put in front of customers. So now it's time to take these three and actually put them over into the sprint board. And when you take them over here you might actually end up rewriting them onto like an index card. Now you may not have to do all of this detail if you're working with a team, you'll find that if you can get into some of this detail, it'll be much easier for them to understand what it is that you want them to do. And on this index card, you're going to want to include three elements. The vision of what you're going for, the resources that are needed to get there, and the definition of done of what success looks like. If you're familiar with Profit Factory and my work, you'll recognize this is actually what's called 360 delegation. And again, if you are a low follow through person, you may find this to be challenging. So I encourage you to work with somebody who's high follow through to help you to get clarity and to unpack this into its smaller pieces. Um, then from there, you're going to want to unpack each of these sticky notes into its component parts. So again, if, if we take a look at this first one and we see that mock-up is this post-it note, you may unpack that into um, something like research colors, research logos, um, get you know um, five suggested logos from graphic designer. There might be subtasks to that. Now the reason that we want to unpack that way, I'll just put it down here because it's not uh, clouded with this information. Um, when you unpack a task, you're now creating a number of stickies related to that. And because you've unpacked it into smaller pieces, it's possible for multiple team members to come along and work side by side and process the work in parallel rather than it having to be sequential where one person does their work and then passes it on to the next person and then everybody has to wait to get it passed on to the next person everything can happen sequentially at the same time where maybe team player a puts that post-it note in play while team player b takes care of researching the logos where while team player c is the one who's actually researching best layouts for the website mock-up um, now, um, you may be wondering, so, so what are these? These are called swim lanes, swim lanes, one for each of your kind of like higher level projects. And then the columns are to do, doing, and done. To do, doing, done. And so the idea is as you and our team members are grabbing different post-it notes and putting them into play, now they get moved in, into doing then ultimately, obviously, the goal is to get all the post-it notes over into done um, within the two-week period. So if you are down here in the lower follow-through area, um, you may not do all this unpacking, and you may not figure out all the vision, resources, definition of done, and especially if you're just working alone and you don't have anybody working with you, you may not do all this. You may just take these post-it notes, just slap them on there and get going. I'm not against that. Whatever's going to get you going and going to make you the most productive. I know that um, especially entrepreneurs with a higher quick start score, uh, minimum six, um, but getting up into the seven, eights, nines, and tens, 
they'll oftentimes be prolific in brain dumping a ton of stuff into their backlog, coming with tons of post-it notes. The downside for some of the quick starts is then they feel overwhelmed if they actually have to do all of it. So some of the quick starts that I know, they love to not only brain dump this, but once they pick their highest priority projects and put them onto their sprint board, they'll literally take this backlog brain dump with all of the like dozens of stickies and they'll like roll it up and put it in the closet or they'll if they've got one of those like science fair presentation boards they'll shut the panels and put it in the closet so that it's out of sight out of mind and they don't have to feel all fired up about oh i could do this oh i could do that and and their quick start brain is just firing in every possible direction no 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 no, no. they save themselves from themselves by packing this up putting it away in the closet or closing the room to the door that has it on the wall so that they can just focus on their sprint board and not get distracted by the shiny objects that are on the backlog. If you found this to be helpful, um, check us out at ProfitFactory.com. If you are not already a member, consider joining our Profit Factory Builders Club. It's called Builders Club. Consulting with me is $500 an hour at the time of this recording. Um, so it can be kind of expensive depending on the size of your business to hire me. An alternative builders club is only like 95 bucks a month. And I do do uh, at least one, if not two webinars a month where you get a chance to ask questions. You also get the benefit of other entrepreneurs on there who are doing sprint boards and know about 360 delegation and the 80, 20 rule, all the tools that we talk about with profit factory. And so you can get lots of support from fellow team members there as well. Thank you so much for listening. This is Tim Francis from profit factory, and I look forward to hearing about all of your successes. Thank you.